thanks all for coming, uh, for joining. Going to get through the risk warning screen here. We're in this first page. And there we are. <clears throat> so, uh, not as much in the way of economic data this week, but still a big one on Wednesday is going to be the, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve Minutes. And I think that's going to be a big driver of what happens this week. Last week, we saw some pretty key um, key economic data um, highlighted in my um, note here in the insights. It was um, – hold on. Uh, you can see uh, that it was uh, – if I can just find the, um, the note here that uh, retail sales – Producer price inflation, industrial production, consumer sentiment, all missed expectations last week in um, in U.S. economic data. So some of the things I was mentioning in that note there is that, um, okay, we've had that missed data. How is the Fed looking at things? Now, these minutes are about two weeks old, and since then, including that data I just mentioned, we've, we've seen more weakening data. Uh, but the big worry here is that uh, the Fed looks still to, towards tightening in the next few meetings, despite this apparent economic growth slowdown in the U.S. That's the bigger theme in markets, and uh, that's what's been pushing currencies around, and that, to a large extent, has been explaining what's been happening in, in bond and, and stock markets in, in Europe. Um, we've seen a strengthening of the euro, and uh, we can have a look at that chart right here. Um, partly because of better economic data in Europe, but just partly because of this, this weakening in U.S. data and that divergence between the expansion in the U.S. and the contraction in Europe is now very much tightened for the time being. In Europe, um, as it stands right now, looks to have grown at a faster pace than the U.S. and the U.K. for the first quarter. So this whole divergence trade of you know, the Fed looking to tighten rates before the ECB, even though it still remains to be the case, it's just less so the case right now. That and that gap between when the two banks moves arguably is narrowed. You know, it's it's entirely possible that the the Federal Reserve won't tighten interest rates this year. Um, and if you know if the current uh, data trends persist. Now um, that being said, we've had quite a good run up in the euro here, and I think that we're running into a distinct kind of risk area. Because so this is the uh, the daily chart. You can see we've had many more up days outpacing than just a small number of um, down days that we've had. We've run into this 114.50 barrier here, which is which is what capped all these the, these gains. And I think there's still possibility of a push up to 115. But I think that's going to be a, a you know distinct trouble area, and if you look on the weekly chart, it's a bit more apparent why. So here's that here's that high that I was highlighting, which had a bunch of daily highs, but that one prominent weekly high, and then this is this kind of peak that we had um, back at the start of February, and uh, you know that's where the price kind of had its last leg that broke down, and that's where it corrected back to. My feeling is that. Perhaps we're just a bit overdone in the euro at this point, and there are some slight signs not really occurring yet. But you know, this is this is one of the. I mean, this depends on your own tolerance for risk and how you approach the trend in the market. Um, you know, so some may feel that it's worth still trading in the direction of this uh, this daily trend, but just knowledgeable of the fact that we're running into this kind of headwind type area and aware of the fact that um, uh, you know the the trade may not run into to new highs and so perhaps a bit more keen to cut losses quicker than you might otherwise be that that's one approach another approach is well let's just get through this this difficult area which would to me is arguably capped around uh, fifteen thirty probably right at the top of it but one fifteen is the um, is the key level wait for us to push through there, then feel a bit more confident about the trend resuming. Um, so it depends on and how you typically approach things, but I think we're, the trend is not necessarily over, but it's, it's reaching a um, bit of a headwind here. And so perhaps how long, how much, how much, um, how many, how much legs this, this rally has in the euro, but not just the euro. If we flip over to the pound as well, um, 
you know how much how much legs these these rallies have may rest on the uh, the Fed minutes this week, which which get released late Wednesday around 7 p.m. in in the UK. But again, if we're just looking at this pound here, it's obviously had a, a fantastic run. You know, it's obviously uh, held back somewhat by concerns over the election. We had a sort of um, uh, uh, an election result that points to a bit more certainty in terms of the uh, the, UK, uh, the UK economy, or well, at least that's the perception anyway. And so that, um, coupled with this weakness in the US and some comparatively strong economic data that we saw last week, um, uh, the um, employment picture looks solid still, and we saw a pickup in wages. So, um, you know, some reasons to be um, strong the pound, and obviously that difference between the pound, uh, the difference between the UK economy and the, the, the US economy is is, uh, is very negligible at this point in terms of which one is um, outpacing the other. But still, the dollar is the world reserve currency, so, you know, the pound is subject to that. And some of the other divergences out there, namely between Europe and Japan, which is obviously a lot more stark. <clears throat> but again, if we look at this weekly chart here, a really solid run for the pound. And we're coming just shy of this 50% uh, retracement mark, which, you know, it's a zone. You know, we know typically we don't bank straight on it. That's right around 159. We've hit 158, uh, which corresponds with this, um, this peak here of this, uh, you know, pretty much the exact peak of what I deem to be this sort of supply zone where we had a peak and then we broke lower through those lows. And, uh, you know, keep in mind we are below the 55-week moving average. Um, so it's not to say we're going to make, uh, you know, go down and necessarily make new lows, but we, you know, we're definitely in an area that risks a um, risk of correction. Now, a couple of areas of potential support would be this um, 155.50, which is this peak from, um, I think it's actually the 26th of Feb on the daily chart, and then um, down here, which you can see more clearly on the daily chart, which is basically that sort of um, tweezer top that we broke through, could be a uh, support on the way down which is at 155, just this beast. Um, so this, to me, has some merit, this um, declining wedge pattern that we saw. So on the one side, it could suggest that we've got a bit more upside eventually, but it could also suggest that maybe even the uh, the price corrects beneath this high and makes a steeper correction down towards maybe 153, around where this declining trend line is, for a sort of for like a break, a retest, and a move again. Now, I'm probably not going to cover dollar yen. Just, I mean, I'll, I'll bring up the chart, but it's uh, you know, there's there's not a lot going on here. We're in this very tight range. For the moment, it's it, it's actually pretty great trading for buying and selling the top of this range. But obviously, the range has to break at some point. You know, and that's when you're going to face um, uh, you know losing trade if you're buying and selling the bottom top of the range. But you know, for those who've been doing that, fantastic. For those who are looking for trends. Uh, yeah, really not too good. And we're, it's all part of this broader range of 116 to 122 as well. Um, outside of the um, the currency front, um, so sort of normally hey, I normally cover equities first here, but I think some of the more important moves at the moment are actually um, outside of equities. You know, not to mention the the record high in the S&P 500. We'll get to that. Um, just having a look at gold here. Um, now I pointed to this potential uh, potential breakout last week, and it, it looks like we um, we could be in the midst of a, a breakout of this key. Um, it's, it's basically the one um, one to twenty uh, number, but it's but it's a bit more specific than that. You say one, two, two, three. I would say is that level specifically been hit about four times and um, as of today we look like we could get another close Friday was pretty negligible but though you know according to our charts we pretty much closed above it so then um, you know just if you're taking this um, which I, a while back I highlighted as a inverse head and shoulders pattern although we've got some pr false breakouts down here and probably shook a lot of people out of that possible trade, but now we're back up again. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit of a dubious one, a pretty shaky left shoulder, a pretty extended right shoulder, but nevertheless, this is still quite a key area. Uh, but if you do take out, if you do take that, that height there and extend it beyond, 
takes you quite nicely to this um, to this uh, January peak. So we could be we could be looking at um, 1,300 again in gold um, if this if this breakout has any legs. Um, also got a declining RSI trend line here for what it's worth. Um, that um, again suggests that we could have could have a bit of a game changer in gold. And when you look at when you're trading gold. Always good to have a look at what silver's doing because if it's confirming the break, then um, it shows them it could be a bit more, uh, a bit more reliability in the in the breakout. And um, silver arguably is an even more notable break than gold. Uh, this is something I highlighted in the the video snapshot at the tail end of last week, and it's um, it's followed through so far. Um, you can see this was quite a long-standing declining trend line that a lot of people all have had on their charts because it's fairly obvious. And it kind of forms part of a sort of triangle pattern with arguably 15.50 as a base. So if you think about what's really been happening here is that sellers have been just failing to push price below 15.50, or at least close it below, since the beginning of the year. And now we've actually managed to overcome this declining area of, of, of where the seller's been coming in. And it's um, so we're now up into this what has been a sort of supply zone, but I would say given the fact that we got very close to it before and failed, this time I think there's a bit more chance that we actually push up to the top of it. And um, you know, certainly 1850 will be a big barrier, but um, to me, um, if this tr if this pattern has any weight, which you could maybe take 1550 to the height of the triangle here, you know, that carries you up about 20% from the breakout. So that was, you know, so these objectives don't always work, but um, that was something I highlighted in the, uh, the snapshot video from last week. So if you haven't watched that already, worth a, worth a quick watch. Um, again, but what, you know, what, what fundamentally would trigger this, I think it's, it's already started to happen, this trade, whether it actually uh, completes. Again, a lot comes down to the, the Fed and their, um, their minutes this week. Um, now, <clears throat> flipping over to equities, start with UK markets, um, and uh, that being the case, put a little note on here just to um, to kind of help us out here. This is some of the kind of key um, data points I'm looking at this week. So when we're talking about the UK, inflation data tomorrow will certainly be important. Um, we had the Bank of England last week suggesting that um, they expect to see deflation in the UK. So there is an outside chance, not even outside, distinct possibility that we'll see deflation for the first time in recorded uh, UK history um, at maybe m minus 0.1%. Although um, that risk has been reduced somewhat because oil prices are bounced, but there could be some sort of residual effect um, that's translated into the cost of production and things. So the, the wider inflation measure could still could still drop as a sort of delayed effect. So that would be, on the face of it, a bit of a negative for the pound. And um, again, perhaps another reason that that 158 level could could suffer. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb for equities at the moment, though, is that um, anything that points to lower interest rates for longer deemed to be positive. So the um, in the UK 100, um, we've, we've basically come below these uh, these moving averages, so not such a definite uptrend at this point by any stretch. It's already it was already a bit of a slow progress uptrend with each peak, uh, you know, barely sort of slowly not making as much progress beyond the, the previous. Uh, this is a, a rising wedge pattern which is bearish. Doesn't necessarily mean we've reached the top of it yet. We could still test the top of the, the pattern again. Um, but there was this trend line which has been sort of dubiously broken. We're sort of retesting from the underside right now, and you know, it's worth you know, feasibly pl coming into play, um, which could point to a move back down to test this spike low. But I think this is probably the, the main line that we'd be looking at at the moment. So a break below there is what's needed to really kind of change the sentiment on the, on the UK 100. And uh, should inflation start to pick up, Arguably, that's um, uh, you know that's negative for the index. If inflation really dips down, well, it's not great for the economy, but arguably means lower rates are longer for the UK. So that could could you know net be a benefit for the uh, the UK 100 here.
Now, if I just um, minimise this again, a couple of earnings to be to, to note for this week: Marks and Spencers on Wednesday, Royal Mail on Thursday. And then the other big UK announcement is UK retail sales on uh, on Thursday. Um, jumping over to U.S. indices, uh, so I just mentioned, obviously, probably aware that we finished on a record high, according to the cash index, uh, last week. According to our charts, uh, you know, sort of derived from futures prices, we didn't really push through that that intraday peak, and we're coming off from there at the moment. So, um, this is one where you know, the longer term trend is obviously higher. If we you know, remind ourselves, looking at this weekly chart, you know, not much to like this as a um, an uptrend, you know, we're well above the the 21 week moving average, and the 55, <clears throat> and above this uh, this rising trend line, which has had um, three odd touches. Um, so longer term uptrend. So you've got to be careful when getting bearish at these kind of levels. You know, people have been trying to short this market all the way up, uh, you know, in trouble. But um, nonetheless, on the shorter term, in these kind of range trading environments. You've got to be aware of the fact that a lot of the time the um, the range maintains. So the probabilities are with the range maintaining and selling back into the range. Obviously, at some point that doesn't work. We've had a number of tests so far. So you know, if you are a believer that this long-term uptrend is going to resume, there's no particular reason to believe it shouldn't. Then um, then actually you're looking for opportunities. Um, at the bottom of the range, obviously, the the lower risk. But um, you know, if you think that maybe that action from um, from Thursday last week was quite strong, you know, we could even just go as far as um, two one ten before um, the, the, you know we actually see that that dip and break out just a test of that previous high, which was what we broke through on Thursday. Um, or we could maybe get a dip into these moving averages, perhaps down to the bottom of this kind of range, which has been holding quite well at 2070. So, um, not a certain uptrend at this point. You know, if you're looking to buy dips, probably the better strategy at this point is to wait for the more, con you know, the more defined breakout, and then wait for a dip from there. At the moment, this is not really dip buying territory in my book. Um, it's range territory, which you want to be buying and selling at the top of the range. <coughs> Looks very, very similar with the US 30. You know, we could be looking at the same market almost here. Touch of that high coming off it. NASDAQ potentially a bit more interesting. We had a, um, you know, I mean, what you could argue to be a bit more weakness and that we haven't actually retested those the peaks. But we did get the break of this declining trend line, so potentially just a dip down to this breakout area here, which corresponds with the 21-day uh, moving average. If this trend breakout in the S&P and the U.S. 30 is going to continue, then we've actually got a bit more value on the, um, the NASDAQ. I think um, while we're above this rising trend line, we're still in business on the, on the NASDAQ for the uptrend. And so, you know, we don't know if it's going to hold, but um, probabilities suggest it, it should. Uh, now, just the um, Germany 30 here, um, we basically got this situation where these, these trend lines are really what's determining what's happening. We've got this declining, rising trend line through the peaks. Which we pretty much came off. Um, now we haven't quite tested it perfectly. You can see that's broadly speaking what's what's kind of defining, uh, capping the upside, <clears throat> and this uh, longer-term rising trend line here, which is um, capping the downside. So turning into a bit of a breakout trade. <clears throat> Again, the, the longer-term trend is up. So, and also looking at these two longer wicks. You know, I would I would suggest that still the you know you want to you know we've got the 21 week moving average we've just bounced off so um, you know a nice way to to be a bit more conservative here is we do have this declining trend line so if you're not quite sure if this is the end of the correction you know wait for a bit more of a technical confirmation for a break of that trend line and then you're a 
bit more positive about the fact that we're going to uh, move higher again. <clears throat> but um, yeah, one of those where obviously um, you know, we failed. To, you can see here the kind of progression of lows. Made this low, um, bounced up. Okay, fair enough. Made a new low, but weren't able to really close below this low here. Came up again. Didn't make a new high, but came back down. And now this is the low we've got our eyes on. We weren't even able to kind of spike through it. So a gradually sort of, um, you know, a, a bit of kind of a, a weakening of this trend. So it could certainly consolidate and break down again, but um, suggested perhaps that we're putting a bit of a base in. And then just, you know, you need that confirmation of the breakthrough here to really know it's taking place. But, um, you know, if you're looking for value, then you, you know, you buy within the consolidation just at higher risk. <clears throat> Um, any questions at all? Obviously, um, you know, fire them through if there's some particular levels or um, uh, markets that you're following that I haven't touched on yet, then, um, you know, f feel free to send a message through. Um, and I'm happy to cover those. But I think the uh, the other big one that we didn't quite touch yet, because we looked at gold and silver, which um kind of breaking out, but um, while they are looking higher today, there's a bit more downside risk, arguably, to uh, the oil markets. Um, so let's have a look at the longer term prospect here. Now you can see we basically put in what you could you could quite comfortably say is a sort of double bottom and um, broken out from in WTI. So if you are using a, a sort of cons double bottom and take the conservative uh, low here, go up to the uh, the, the neckline, and then. Um, Look for a an area of um, a possible uh, a possible objective from the breakout in this consolidation higher. Then we're actually looking at more like 60 um, 65 in uh, in WTI, <coughs> and um, just above that is this 38.2, which in a again another uh, commodity snapshot video I mentioned there's the 67 would be another possible objective here since kind of 20. 23.6 capped us for a little while, but moved above that, and we have a couple of areas that 55 to 57 area could still be on. But um, what's happening here is that we've had this this change, whereby we started to see um, U.S. inventories and the weekly data decline. Now that had been speculated on, and uh, that was largely the reason for this rally. So now what we've seen recently is um, on the last couple of Wednesdays, we've actually seen a sell-off on that, what is actually quite positive data in a sort of um, buy the rumor, sell the news kind of situation where you're buying into the release um, showing a decline in U.S. production. So, you know, decline in production, uh, decline in supply, that supply-demand imbalance, which has been holding oil prices down, is, is lifted slightly. So the U.S. are producing less oil and <clears throat> Just means there's less less, globe, uh, less oil out there, but um, you know this is not necessarily to say we're heading up to $100 per hour oil again. The whole thing's completely changed. The U.S. still are producing oil, and the the Middle East are uh, producing as much as they can to maintain market share. So there's, there's going to be limits limits to how far this can go, but it's obviously it's um, a you know better situation now than the the U.S. just continually increasing the amount of production and increasing the global supply of oil. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the moment, we've got a bit of a cap here. But uh, if, we're, if we're taking those objectives for any kind of meaning, then we've still perhaps got a bit of room to 65. Again, obviously, all these commodities are dollar denominated, so um, the uh, the breakout may again rest on on the Fed on the the FOMC minutes. Um, I, I I mean, I think these minutes are probably going to be pretty neutral. The, the statements was um, was very hedged, so they they reduced the economic outlook, um, but um, but they still left um, a, a rate hike as early as June on the table, um, saying that they're going to be data dependent going forward. So really, at any of these meetings, probably the meetings that involve a press press conference, um, there could be a rate hike, and that's that's the that's the threat here. 
Enas the possible reason for commodities to, to break break higher. Um, but um, my feeling is that probably there's going to be a lot of talk about the kind of economic concerns, and maybe that will, you know, on edge, be taken as a sort of neutral to dovish, and not necessarily a um, you know an outright dovish saying that you know we're not going to hike rates this year or anything that would create a major rally in equities and, and a drop in the dollar, but enough to be not such a barrier, and that we can look through it for now. Um, so that was, what was that WTI I was looking at? Let me just have a quick look at Brent here. <clears throat> um, Brent, similar picture in terms of we've got this kind of um, bit of a consolidation happening. Um, same thing on these last two Wednesdays is when we've seen the sell-off and then another run-up. So we could, based on the previous pattern, expect a bit of a jump tomorrow and then the sell-off on Wednesday if that, that same pattern keeps happening. Um, RSI pattern to note here is that we have seen a, a dip through the RSI trend line, but we're still holding this 21-day moving average. So again, a bit of a, you know, you'll notice that um, with the, the currencies and with the commodities, a longer-term sell-off that we've had to deal with, and now we're sort of breaking higher. So it's one of those where you're not, you know, you're still beneath these, this, uh, you know, 55-week moving average on a lot of these, like the pound, the euro. Uh, gold, Brent, all of these, um, but we're getting a bit of a run high at the moment. So it's one of those where the the trend is higher in the short term, and it's you know it's um, that's generally for short term trading the, the better trend to be to be aware of. But you just got to be aware of the fact that you haven't got the support of the the longer term averages. The, the overall longer term trend could still be down. So, is there anything? Well, I guess what I haven't really mentioned, which I will in the last couple of minutes here, is just that we've got, so I mentioned the, the Fed minutes, which is, is going to be the big one, but we do have minutes from uh, the Bank of England um, on Wednesday and um, some, some notes from the, the ECB on Thursday. Um, so, that will add, we did have the Bank of England inflation report quite recently, so that's um, a really arguably a bit more current than these Bank of England minutes. Um, but nevertheless, um, either are going to be a, a bolster or a headwind to, these, to, to the British pound, they're definitely important. I think that's about it. Um, I think I've said all we need to know. I hope that was, um, that was useful. And um, good luck with trading. But uh, I think this is Jasper Law signing off. Thanks all. Have a good one.